Hello, and welcome to the Tartan Topiary. I'm Mary, and on this channel, I always feature a book on the topic of interior design or gardening, and how this book has inspired me, or just general musings of life. I hope you will take a moment to sit down and relax as we look at Bunny Williams' Love Affairs with Houses. Bunny Williams is a world-renowned interior designer and industry leader. Williams is a member of the AD100 Hall of Fame, El Decor A-List, and most recently, she has received House Beautiful's Giants of Design Award. Bunny is not only a trailblazer in interior design, but she is also a garden expert. She has partnerships with brands that include Kaspari, Century Furniture, Dash & Albert, Pinecone Hill, and Ballard Designs. Southern Living Magazine often refers to her as America's reigning queen of decorating. Throughout the pages of Love Affairs with Houses, Bunny Williams presents her newest work through 15 houses that she has decorated and loved. Bunny shares her affair with each one of these houses as she details the styles of each one, what drew her to the projects, and her approach to their decor, as well as how these plans evolved with the lives of her clients. Her chapters include a weekend retreat, a Georgian stone house, a New York duplex, a French farmhouse, and many more. Bunny offers personal tips for choosing classics and for decorating with flexible pieces that can play more than one role in a design scheme. She offers a refined chic style that is always comfortable. She has an eye for detail that remains impeccable, and as Bunny tells it, the best pieces have the best stories. Bunny Williams writes of her work, It still thrills me that every new project is like a new romance. There's the initial getting to know you phase, the discovery of how people live, what their dreams are, what inspires them, and other critical information as we begin the designing process. Each stage has its exciting moments as well as its anxious ones. Bunny knows, as many of us do, that there is excitement and frustration when working with architects, hunting for just the right piece to finish a room, and then letting go. Bunny writes in the introduction, it is hard for me to believe I have been designing for four decades. I can still remember the excitement and nervousness 
of the first day in my first job. It was at Stair and Company, an elegant antique shop on East 57th Street in New York City. Those days in that shop unleashed a passion that has stayed with me ever since. Two and a half years later, I was fortunate enough to land a job at the design firm of Parrish Hadley. There, my real education began, starting at the bottom, preparing estimates and coordinating projects. This taught me the basis for the business part of interior design. Then, I was given the chance to become a shopper. Eventually, I moved on to assistant designer and then to projects of my own. And to this day, every new project thrills me. Love Affairs with Houses, written by Bunny Williams. This book has 304 pages. It is published by Abrams Books, and it retails for $60. Last week, we toured several of these buildings located in the historic Mordecai Homestead in Raleigh, North Carolina. I will leave a link to that video in the description in case you would like to watch it. While on this tour, I had a very interesting conversation about paint color with one of the preservationists on the property. Much research went into the color of these buildings. This beautiful green was once derived from arsenic. Two of the most popular greens used in the 1800s were Paris green and Shaley's green. These colors were used in many things, such as fabric and wallpaper, and it can be traced back to both physical and mental illnesses of the time. The yellows and reds used an ingredient called ochre. This is a natural iron oxide that is derived from clay and sand. Depending on the pigment, these colors can range from yellow to a deep red. This home was built by Joel Lane in 1785. This house was inherited by his granddaughter, Margaret, who married a gentleman by the name of Moses Mordecai. Moses remodeled and added on to the home in 1826. It was then transformed into a beautiful Greek Revival home. It was designed by architect William Nichols, who was born in Bath, England, and immigrated to the United States. Nichols became a prolific architect and was highly sought after well into the mid-1800s. This homestead provides a glimpse into the life of a single family, spanning five generations. The Mordecai house remained in the Lane Mordecai family until 1967, when the city of Raleigh purchased the property. It 
It was in 1967 when local preservationists began to supervise and protect this property as a historic park. They were able to obtain many original Mordecai furnishings, as well as preserve the family papers and library. This is a portrait of Moses Mordecai. The china, as well as the silver, belong to the family and date back to the late 1700s. This metal plate warmer acted as a type of rudimentary microwave. It kept the contents of the plates warm as it was usually placed beside or in front of the fireplace. This menu listed the desserts as pies, puddings, and ice cream. Before we get too excited about dessert, I will mention that in one of the cookbooks left in the family's library, was a handwritten recipe for oyster ice cream. This wooden serving piece was made for wheel or hoop cheese, which commonly accompanied most any meal. This chandelier was shipped from England. It has remained in this location since the house was built. It was originally designed for candles and later refitted for gas and then finally electricity. A portrait of Henry Mordecai is displayed in this room, just across from his youngest sister, Margaret. It was Margaret's great-niece, Patty, that was the primary custodian of the home during the Great Depression. By this time, the family was in massive debt, and Patty had to sell much of the remaining land. She then did something that was considered very risky at the time. She invested the money in the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company and what would become Duke Energy. This proved to be a very wise investment and it saved the home as well as the remaining land. Also, original to the house, are two authentic hand-painted watercolors by John James Audubon. This bedroom, along with the furnishings, belonged to Ellen Mordecai. She was born in the home in 1820. The dress belonged to Ellen also. She was a small woman that measured four feet, nine inches tall, but was said to have had a personality that was twice her size. Ellen's diary is now a book titled Gleanings from Long Ago. Although the paint and the wallpaper are not original, 
According to all accounts, they are very similar to what was in the home in the 1800s. I loved all of the furnishings in the house, especially the grandfather clock and the two Audubon paintings. But this is probably my favorite piece. It's a 200-year-old chaise lounge in its original condition. Thanks for touring the Mordecai homestead with me. I will leave more information about this house and the family in the description below. Have a great week, and I'll see you next Friday.